Hello everyone. In this class, we will learn how to view, execute, modify, and delete stored procedures. After creating a stored procedure, we can view it through statements. The syntax is shown on the screen. To view the creation statement of a stored procedure, show create procedure procedure underline name. To view the status of a stored procedure, show procedure status like matching underline pattern. To view all stored procedures in the system, show procedure status. After creating a stored procedure, let's view its status. We will demonstrate using the previously created stored procedure proceedings underline student add as an example. Run the statement. Show procedure status like, followed by the name of the stored procedure. After executing the statement, we can see some information about the stored procedure, such as the database it belongs to, its name, type, creator, creation time, modification time, character set, collation, and other relevant details. To make a stored procedure work, you must use the call statement provided by MySQL to invoke it. The syntax is as shown on the screen. Call procedure underline name argument underline list. The argument list should correspond to the parameters of the stored procedure. When the parameter is of type in, the argument value can be a variable or a direct data. When the parameter is of type out or in out, the parameter passed to the stored procedure must be a variable used to receive data returned to the caller. Next, we will execute the stored procedures. The command we use is the call command, followed by the name of the stored procedure. If the stored procedure has defined parameters, we need to pass the parameter values actual arguments. If the stored procedure does not require parameters, we simply use empty parentheses after the stored procedure name. Let's review the two stored procedures we defined earlier. The proceedings underline course stored procedure does not require any input parameters. So when we call it, we use empty parentheses. We execute the proceedings underline course stored procedure. Select multiplied by from course, which simply retrieves all records from the course table. When we call this stored procedure, it outputs the records from the course table. Next, we execute the proceedings underline student add stored procedure, which requires four parameters. We provide the corresponding values for these parameters as arguments. The number of arguments should match, and the data types should be compatible. Execute the statement. Query OK indicates successful execution. Here, let's examine the specific definition of the stored procedure, which inserts the parameter values into the student table. We can verify if the record with the student ID 070100 has been successfully inserted into the student table by querying it using the select statement. Select multiplied by from student where snow equals 0701004. We can see that the record for Chen Dong Dong has been inserted into the student table through the stored procedure. Modifying a stored procedure is a straightforward operation. The syntax is alter procedure procedure underline name characteristics. The syntax follows a similar structure to creating a stored procedure, with the keyword create replaced by alter. Now let's demonstrate how to modify a stored procedure. We'll use an example of setting a comment for the stored procedure proceedings underline student add. The command we'll use is alter procedure. Similar to the create procedure command used for creating a stored procedure. To modify the stored procedure, we use the alter procedure command followed by the name of the stored procedure, which is proceedings underline 
student ADD in this case. Then we use the comment keyword to indicate the comment and provide the comment information. Because it is a string, it is enclosed in single quotation marks. In this example, the comment is set as adding student records to the student table. Now, let's execute the command to modify the stored procedure. The execution is successful. Next, we'll check the status information of the stored procedure to see if the comment has been successfully modified. We use the show procedure status like command followed by the name of the stored procedure. From the results of the demonstration, we can see that among the various information displayed, there is a comment section. Previously, the comment was empty, but after modifying the stored procedure command, the comment has been updated to adding student records to the student table. This completes the operation of modifying the stored procedure. Deleting a stored procedure can be done using the drop command. The drop command removes the stored procedure from the current database. The syntax is shown on the screen. Drop procedure if exists procedure underline name. Now let's demonstrate how to delete a stored procedure. We will use the drop procedure command followed by the name of the stored procedure, such as proceedings underline student ADD. We want to delete this stored procedure. Execute the statement. Query OK. The stored procedure has been successfully deleted. Now, take a look at the following statement. By adding if exists before the stored procedure name, what does it do? Let's see. Since the proceedings underline, student ADD stored procedure has already been deleted earlier. If we execute the delete statement again, to delete this stored procedure, let's run it. An error will be thrown, indicating that the proceedings underline, student ADD stored procedure in the student info database does not exist. Now, if we add if exists before the name of the stored procedure and run it, the system will not throw an error. However, a warning will be displayed. Now, let's check the warning message. We can see that the warning message indicates that the proceedings underline student ADD stored procedure in the student info database does not exist. So, there is a difference between adding if exists and not. Fill in the blanks questions. We have discussed how to view stored procedures, execute stored procedures, modify them, and delete them. We hope that you have gained a good understanding and mastery of these concepts. Thank you, everyone.